Let's try that. That might be working. You never know. Hopefully it is. Let us know in the uh, in the comments if this is working. I do apologise for the uh, the lack of organisation here on the desk, as is usually the case here at Mike's Unboxing. So it is, uh, what day is today? Thursday. Thursday the something of 29th of October 2020. And for those of you that are all uh, had it up to here with RTX and AMD this and that graphics card that, not being able to buy one and either not having the money to buy one anyway, yeah, this is a little bit of light relief. We're going to do a quick PC, well, I'll say quick, it probably won't be quick, no me, but we're going to do a quick PC swap over. Cavs PC, taken out of our old case, and we're going to put it into the new Phalanx, oops, the Phalanx V2, uh, which some of you may have already seen the video this morning of the unboxing of this and a quick look at it. Um, I did say in the video that I'll do a, a live stream of the build just so you can see how it goes, how easy it is to work in, all those kinds of usual things. So, truth to my word, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I've got all my bits here. A uh, quick rundown of what we're using. So it's ASRock B450 Pro 4. Good old favourite, we do like this one. Uh, on here is the Ryzen 7 1700X. A little bit of an older processor, but 8 core, 16 threads, certainly gets the job done. And for what CAF does on a PC for video editing and stuff, absolutely fine. 16 gigs of Corsair RAM, that's LPX 3000. Graphics card wise, uh, we're going with the Radeon RX 480 older MSI one, again, gets the job done, 8 gig card, absolutely fine. The power supply is a, where are we, it's over here, um, not so great, but it does the job again, uh, this is the Gamax GP500S, I think that is, yeah, GP500S, it's a 80 watt bronze, absolutely fine. The wires aren't particularly nice, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. And for storage, we'll go on with the uh, the old classic. Actually, this is one of the, f well, actually, this is the first SSD I ever bought many, many moons ago. Um, probably a good six or seven years ago, actually. This is the OCZ uh, ARC 100 drive, SATA cool. firmware release 1.00. Uh, that is an old drive. I'm trying to see if it's actually got a date on here anywhere to see when I actually purchased it. Can't see one on there anywhere obvious but yeah a very old drive but still works gets the job done as i said so case wise obviously we're going with the phalanx case which uh you probably can't see because it is quite a monster but there you go quite a big boy so we're gonna get this all ready get this all put in there see how it goes benchmarks and stuff we won't be doing in this video because they just take ages to do and it's uh, pretty boring for everyone concerned so I'm going to do the building this just to get an idea of how easy it is to work in and the kind of general overall feeling of the case. And then we may do a follow up video with kind of benchmark results and maybe after a couple of weeks or a couple of months, see how it goes with the filtration side of things, whether it gets dusty, um, whether the fans remain quiet, all that kind of thing. So that is all stuff that will be coming up very, very shortly. Well, possibly shortly. Let's say a quick hello to those of you that are joining us in the chat. So we've got Angry Doge in the chat, uh, British Noob, Ugly Bob, Sky Stalker, so mostly of our Discord crew. Don't forget, if you want to join our Discord, you can do. Links will probably be in the video description at some point. If not, one of the mods will probably put it in for you. Uh, British Noob says, that case is not doing it for me. Yeah, it's um, it's very much one of those Marmite cases. It's Some people are going to like it, some people are going to hate it. I don't think there's going to be any which will be that kind of on the fence with it. It is one of those things which does kind of evoke certain feelings, either of arousal or complete disdain. <laughs> yes, uh, Sky Stalker says it seems counterintuitive to have three fans in the front and then block the airflow and then hide 75% of the front RGB. Weird. Yes, it is a, it is a little bit more, it is an, an unusual setup. Click Tech Kev says, another stream, are you becoming Kerry? <laughs> no, certainly not. Uh, da -da. Mike Games says, I'm poor, I spent all my money on PC. Ugly Bob says, I've just used CD keys a few times and not had any issues. Awesome, good to hear. Don't forget, if you want to use uh, premium CD keys, you can use the discount code Mike's Unboxing and you get 7.5% off your purchase. Which is pretty awesome. Uh, Pierre Plays is also in the house as well. Uh, Pierre Plays, that's, there's an ironic thing there. Pierre Plays has now got her PC back up and running, whereas Kath currently hasn't got her PC up and running because it's here. 
very much in front of me waiting to be built. Clicktech Kev's in the house as well. Sky Stalker, as we said. Uh, who else we got? Waldo135 says hi. Aletta's in the house as well. Billy K says, what's happening here then? Wish I only knew. Ugly Bob says, holy crap, it's the monolith from 2001. <laughs> yeah. Tristan G says, good morning from Seattle to Mike Cavanaugh. Hi, Tristan. Uh, Dave Bell says, working. Oh, dear. Never mind. Gary says, hi, everyone. It's 10.30am. Uh, Great morning stream. Yeah, Caf says, same PC, different case. Yeah. Sometimes, actually, just changing the case on your PC does make a, a massive amount of difference. Doing, uh, obviously, the reviews that we do, we do get sent quite a few cases for review. And it's really nice to swap out your parts every now and then, put them into a new case, and just experience different things, different builds, uh, setups, cooling, noise profiles, all that kind of thing. Now, obviously, this is in our kind of studio area where this PC is going to live, so it does have to be uh, reasonably quiet, although it is in the furthest corner of the room, so it isn't a massive problem, but potentially it could be, so we uh, certainly need to keep an eye on that. And Kath has a question. Ugly Bob's my assistant today. Ugly Bob is Kath's assistant? Yeah. He's got his shoes on. Oh, he's got his he's got high heels on. I'm not sure actually about that. Clicktech says, looking hot today, Mike. I am feeling hot, and that is a very good uh, segue. New in, Mike's unboxing hoodies, which will be available very shortly for uh, those, well, they'll be initially available to those uh, who are Patreon backers. Uh, depending on how stocks go, if we get anything left over, then I will put them out. We are going to update our website very shortly with various bits and pieces on, so you can uh, help support the channel and buy some bits and pieces. And also stay warm. This actually is really warm. It's only, uh, it's not a, like a heavyweight fleece or hoodie, but it is, uh, certainly does keep you nice and warm, man. It's got quite a nice hood to it as well. I quite like it. It's really good. Very pleased. And big thanks out to uh, Workwear Express for uh, making them for us. And we've got a super chat already coming from Pierre Plays, five pounds. says, is it just me or does the R on the new AMD GPU look like Team Rocket's logo on Pokemon? Yeah, I guess, yeah, I have seen, yeah, I think I, I think I know what you mean. Uh, Click Tech Kev says, what tier? Oh, for the uh, patrons. That is something we're going to work on because obviously these are a little bit more expensive than the t-shirts and obviously the pens as well, uh, which are also available. Let's shield the hell out of this. So you can get your Mike's Unboxing pen now. You can obviously get your Mike's Unboxing t-shirts. And also now, to keep yourself a bit warmer, you can get your Mike's Unboxing hoodie, which is actually very, very warm. And in fact, I have to take the hood off. It's actually, they, when I looked at the design, they look, I looked at the hood and I was like, yeah, that is definitely a Jedi hood if I ever saw one. So yeah, if you want to get, if you want to get your hoodie, please, uh, well, be patient. I'll get it up and update on the Patreon soon. And then hopefully we can get those shipped out, um, which will be the first week of November. So for patrons, yes, I will add it. So yeah, patrons will get them hopefully in the first week of November, maybe the first week of December, depending on how shipping goes. But we'll see what we can do. March if you're in Canada. Yeah, or if you're if you're a Canadian person, then you may get it in kind of March or maybe April if you're lucky. <laughs> All right, sorry, Scott. Gary says, "Okay, Obi Wan." Yeah, we have got Obi-Wan Kenobi in our uh, Discord, so certainly would suit. Uh, okay, so I think that's it. Everyone's in, and yeah, that's all the intros and stuff done. So the best thing to do now is to actually get on with it. So I'm going to clear some space, and we'll start prepping the case itself. Let's get some bits handy. There isn't a great deal of work work there isn't a great deal of room to work in here so i do have to be a little bit careful with my uh space management so let's put the graphics card to one side and the io shield get rid of motherboard processor and ram and hopefully not wheel over it that would be potentially catastrophic the cat does agree so this is the case for those of you who haven't seen it already in the video so the this is the Colink Phalanx V2. Slightly upgraded from the original Phalanx, so you've got uh, better side panels, better RGB, and just a few tweaks here, there, and everywhere. But they've kept the price pretty much exactly the same, which uh, is always nice to see from any manufacturer. So let's take the, uh, we'll take the back panel off first of all. 
get on with that. And we'll put that somewhere else that it won't fall over. I didn't ask, how's everyone doing today? Here in sunny England it is currently very, very wet and very, very nasty looking. It's not good at all. So hopefully you guys are having uh, slightly better weather than us. And Ultimate Tech Hub's in the house. Uh, that's Mike from Ultimate Tech Hub. Go and check out his channel if you want to go and take a look at another tech tuber. And he says, hi, Mike, from Mike in Las Vegas. Cheers. Oh, I wish I was in Las Vegas right now. That would be pretty awesome. Although I definitely wouldn't need a hoodie, so maybe not. So that is the case uh, broken down to its kind of... Uh, this empty shell, as hopefully you can see quite nicely. So you've got some slightly unusual features in this for those of you that haven't seen the unboxing already. So the cutout here is a, a very unusual shape. Very bizarre. Um, I, I have seen that kind of shape before somewhere and I can't put my finger on it where it is I've seen it. But I'm sure I have seen it somewhere else before. Uh, got a side pocket there for, well not a pocket, like a, a routing area for cables, so I don't know if you made it out, it's a slightly angled, a bit recessed, you've got plenty of room in the work, plenty of room in the rear to work with, that's not easy for me to say. So the first thing to do, um, I think, is to put the power supply in, because that is generally a pretty decent place to start. So power supply, nice and easy, what we'll do is move these cables out the way, you see, I did stick on the, uh, the RGB controller with a little bit of double-sided tape because when I was doing the review, I wanted all that clear. And that's where it's just falling off. <laughs> These things always happen. So power supply, nice and easy. All it is is four screws. And it's on, it's on like a kind of resting plate. So it does rise it up a little bit off of the bottom, which is always good. And just four screws, so I'll stick those in now. Pierre Plays YouTube says, Catchers, or do you edit the videos on the YouTube channel? I'll let Kath answer that one. There is an easy answer, uh, not yet. I haven't trained her sufficiently, if at all, really. Although saying that, I have tra trained you on a few things for that, haven't I? Kath does do her own channel, so if you go over to um, ShopSmart, I have to think then, that is Kaf's own personal channel, which is like a sub-channel of ours. And uh, you can get all the local bargains in the UK. Sometimes there's some American stuff as well. No, there's not. Is it not? Never? Not even some of the Amazon deals? No. Are they not? UK only. Oh, right. So, it's Facebook anyway. so it is uh, kind of like Facebook group and also a YouTube content as well. So yeah, go and check it out. Leave a sub. I need to move that motherboard out of the way a bit because I did just run over it. So I think what I'll do is if I uh, disconnect all of these cables, I think with the RGB it's probably best to do this at the very end, work out where all the cables are. I think I probably mentioned that in the review actually that because of the kind of, there's a not a great deal of tie down points in this particular chassis. So you've got kind of four at the top here and there's two at the bottom You've got one there, one there, one there, one there. So there's not a great deal of tie down points. I would have preferred to have seen uh, quite a few more really, to be completely honest with you. But as always, it is what it is. So you have to make do. And actually it's quite good because it's quite a learning experience trying to route your cables and trying to get things to look as nice as it possibly can. Anyway, so that's the power supply in. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that all the motherboard pillars are in the right place. And we'll select some screws, make sure they're all good and the air from there is gonna work. So I'm gonna rest this down on the, uh, on the deck now, and hopefully the overhead camera will take over. Did I press the right button then? Yes, I did. So there we go, there is the, uh, the inside view. Unfortunately, the camera is actually really close, so you don't get a full view of it. But hopefully uh, it's not too bad. Now you can see there, there is actually, I don't know why, but someone's actually put ITX pillars in. I think, 
Is that ITX? Maybe it is full ATX. I don't know. Let's try. I'll stick the uh, the rear I.O. shield in. Stick that in. Get out of the way. So those bits go at the bottom. So it's that way. And this should just pop in quite nice and easily. If there's no cables in the way. It's not a very good angle to be doing this, actually. It's good. Do you have a long 200GE No. That's an easy question. What was that? Is that fully in? Oh, there's a cable in the way. I'm going to have to stand this up a minute. Click clunk. That's better. I think, yeah, that's better. That was uh, a bit of user error there, something that we're quite used to seeing on the channel. But fortunately, I am one of those people that um, I can quite happily admit to my mistakes, however large or small they may be. Now the pillars actually look like they're in the right place already for the motherboard. So let's flip that back down again. So we've got six pillars. I, I think it's because it will support up to EATX. So these extra pins here, here, and here, 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 and here, uh, were a little bit uh, off-putting actually, because it looks like the motherboard is only going to reach to about there. So could have maybe done with a slightly bigger board in this particular setup. So I'll we'll just move that over there, and we'll line that up. There we go, so that lines up with the pillars. And actually it doesn't line up particularly well, if I'm completely honest with you. Mike, have you seen the new RGB Cougar cases? Have I seen the new RGB what, sorry? Cougar. Cougar. No, I haven't. I haven't seen any Cougar cases really. It's not something I actually follow. Um, I've never, never really been a, a huge fan of Cougar cases. Not for any other real reason other than that they just haven't really um, taken taken a, a fancy, really. Right, let's see what screws we need for all the... I should have tried the screws first, actually. That's another rookie error. Let's see how many rookie errors we can rack up today. So we've got our mounting hardware, all the screws. Would have been nice for them to have been able to split those up, really into the, the various screw types for whatever purpose they're for but again it's not the end of the world actually so you do get some extra brass pillars and actually normally what i tend to do is with the extra brass pillars so you don't actually lose the darn things is to uh put them into the case just in case you need them later on so i use my little box wrench for this and i'll stick another one there and if you don't like them because they're brass and they stick out like a sore thumb, if you put one of the, uh, the screws in them, it covers them up, so you don't have to worry about them uh, looking unattractive. Uh, let's just try to thread on this one. All right, so that's a coarse thread, so notice the fine thread screws on this particular case. I'll we'll grab a fine thread screw, give that a try. And yes, that fully threads in. So, happy with that. Whew, blimey, it's a bit warm inside with this uh, Mike's Unboxing hoodie on. <laughs> Shameless plug. So again, just stick those into the pillars. So that way, if you need to put a bigger board in, you've got all your screws there ready. And if you're... Uh, maybe selling the case on or doing a build for somebody else. Again, rather than giving them a box of screws and they don't know where they go, and for the potential new user to make an absolute uh, wreck of the place, then you can quite easily just put these in. Ron Morgan's in the house, says hello. British Noob says, me and Adder are watching. We are just playing a game right now. Don't blame you. 
I would rather be playing a game right now, if I'm completely honest with you. Me too, but I would Yeah, Cav says she would like to be playing a game also, but she currently has no PC, so better get my ass into gear and get on with it. So let's have a quick time check around the uh, around the world. So currently here in the uh, United Kingdom, good old England, it is currently um, just coming up towards 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So let us know in the comments, in the chat, what time is it where you guys are? I'm assuming in um, kind of central time in the US, it's probably getting on for around about 11 o'clock. I guess, um, not sure about Canada. It's 3.52 UK. Waldo is 3.52 UK time. <laughs> Bless you, Waldo. You are special. <laughs> 9 a.m. in Las Vegas. <laughs> 9 a.m. in Las Vegas, okay. In Vancouver. Good old Vancouver. Is that Sky Stalker? Yeah. 352 for Doge. 352 for Doge as well. 552 in Latvia. <laughs> Latvia. Latvia. Good old sunny Latvia. Illinois, 1052. 1052 AM, is that in Illinois? Yeah. Yeah, of course it would be. Yeah. I can't believe I even said that. Dipstick. Griffiths asks, just a quick question, are Molex to 8-pin PCIe okay to use temporarily until my new PSU arrives eventually? Yeah, sure. Those adapters, um, generally pretty good. 1552 is Sunny Tamworth. <laughs> Sunny Tamworth. Go. Noobs is 3.30, but it's a block mic. <laughs> Oh, have I used the wrong screw there already? I think I might have used the wrong screw. There we go. So now we've got all the screws in, we can go ahead and just give them a final little tighten up. Make sure it's not going to go anywhere. God, I've forgotten how difficult this is actually to do from this position. Normally you'd be doing this kind of face on. Oh, we missed a screw. We missed a screw, ladies and gentlemen. Disaster has struck once again. Mark Griffiths, 1553, Sonny Dudley. Dudley, Sonny Dudley. Um, this, actually, if anyone's near a PC that can actually access the internet at the moment, do me a favor and have a look and see where the AMD 12 volt RGB cable goes on the ASRock B450 Pro 4, this board. There's a four pin connector and one of them is 12 volt. I need to know which side is the 12 volt. So when I plug it in, I don't make it explode because that would suck a little bit. Sorry, Kath, can you pass me a cup of tea, please? Can I do, can I do the what? The link one. What's the link? I don't understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say something about, I can't say something about a link. Don't I don't know if you've got the link. I don't appear to have a link. Uh, who from? Doriente. Ah, uh, Doriente. Calf, don't know if you've got the link I forwarded concerning the Intertech Panorama C. Ah, oh, right, okay. No, we haven't got it, I don't think. I don't think we have. I can't check my PC. Yeah, we can't check the PC at the moment because it's uh, currently in bits. But they email it to you. Yeah, you can email it, mike at And uh, let's change that back. Um, actually, I've got to take this hoodie off because it is rather warm. So do excuse me, ladies and gents. Oh yeah. Have I still got a microphone on? Oh yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh dear lord, that's enough of that. 
Dory and says, please call me Dory. Okie dokie. And you offended Mark. I've offended Mark? Why have I offended Mark? I don't sound like that, I'm a brummy. We sound to Sorry Mark, I didn't realise the comment was from you. I thought it was from uh, Click Tech Kev. Because he is in the... Uh, he's in Tamworth. He's in a, yeah, he's in a similar area, if not the same. <laughs> Get myself into trouble. Right, what else can I do whilst I'm on this side? Um, not really a great deal. I think we're pretty much done on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass through the cable for the fan. And we can take that out through the back, which is so simple. There is so much room here between the motherboard and the uh, the top of the case. It is absolutely ridiculous how much room there is. It really, really is. Let's see. Let's see if we can get you uh, a better view on that. Hopefully you can see that now. There is an absolute ton of room at the top there. Look how much room is on the top of there. That is just crying out for a water cooling solution. There's a ton of room. An absolute ton. Okay, so uh, let's see, what should we put through next? Well, actually, we might as well put through the, uh, the extra power connector for the CPU because, uh, like, hello, there's tons of room. And this is going to not require me to have any damaged knuckles or anything which is absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. That's my best Gary Barlow impression there. If you don't know who Gary Barlow is, look up, uh, take that. Take that. Pierre asked, why do I want such a big case? It's not about wanting. It's, yeah, it's what you don't need a big case. You don't want a big case really, but why not? Somebody's wanted my old one. Yeah, and actually somebody wanted Cap's old one, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, kind of, uh, yeah, that made everything possible. I don't mind. So let's plop in. I do apologise for the uh, ketchup and mustard there. It, it isn't a good look, it really isn't. Thanks, Babs. I think I've done this already, because it looks like there's, uh, there's drawing on it already. There you go. That's for James. That's for uh, James Miscellaneous because he's got this OCD thing about ketchup and mustard. Ketchup and mustard deserves to be on a hot dog and nowhere else. Maybe on a McDonald's burger. Other burgers are available. There we go. <laughs> Instant karma. There we go. We've got our power connected up there, so that's all good. So, what else do we need actually inside? Well, we don't actually need anything else inside at all, really, because it does a bit, doesn't it? So, we could do with getting rid of some of this cabling, I guess. We do need a Molex connector, sadly. And we need a SATA, so we'll stick with a shorter SATA. And also, we need a GPU power, so we might as well stick that one through while we're in the vicinity. Pull that right the way through. So, in actual fact, there isn't a great deal more that needs to be done apart from the point of putting the, uh, the SSD in. Now, the SSD can go in quite a few places. You can put them in on the back of this section here. And also, there is a, uh, a dedicated caddy section with two removable trays. So, I suppose what we could do is stick them in there. That's probably a good idea. Yeah, as empty space is that big, bothers her. Empty space is... Actually, saying that, there is an SSD tray there as well. Which... Is that going to make life easier? Because I can take the SATA cable straight out of the motherboard and round to there. And then I can always tuck it in the bottom. I'll stick it in here. We'll stick it in here for now. So it's nice and simple. Just line up the screws on the cage, and if you're uh, if you're particularly stupid like me and you get the wrong screw, <laughs> pick one. Of them. Actually, I think I've run out of those little screws, so I might have to put it in the other place anyway. 
Oh, there's one. You don't get many of those little screws, actually. I suppose I did use the extra three on those pillars, which I didn't necessarily need to. I guess a lot of people have got the screws lying around anyway, so... It's not the end of the world. So, we're only going to use two screws. You probably could just use one on there, because there's no moving parts as such. But I guess if you're, uh, if you're transporting the PC or moving it around anywhere, although solid state is solid state and it is pretty uh, resilient, there's no, there's no reason to kind of unnecessarily bang it around. So, did anybody manage to... Oh, that is the wrong screw again. So, has anyone managed to pick themselves up a 3070 today? I, for one, certainly haven't. Because... Um, why? Let me see. Why, why because? Because um, I don't need one, really at the moment. It would be nice to have, but I still think that £500 is pretty much what they're going for here in the UK. Five, well, if you're lucky, 520 I think it seems to be about the cheapest. The, they do seem to still be rather expensive. Like, £500 for a graphics card is a lot of money. Yes, it does enable you to run games at higher refresh rates and resolutions, etc, etc. But realistically, when all said and done, do you really need it? I don't know. Gary says, may I ask, have you tried to buy a R RTX 3070? In my opinion, NVIDIA failed again. Um, I have tried to buy a, a, one of those cards. In actual fact, I did post a link on our Discord. And I found it was on there for probably a good 10, 15 minutes. And then I think a newbie went in there and had a look. And it was gone. So they were kind of available-ish. And this was about... 2 2 30 maybe and seeing they released it kind of one o'clock they did stick around for a little bit not as much as most people would have hoped but they didn't sell out kind of immediately in seconds which is where i think a lot of people were expecting to happen so yeah that's kind of good right then so we've got some of our cabling done now so we can take the the sata cable and run that through the inside and plug it into the top connector because that's where it was connected when it was actually up and running previously. Now that's one thing you should do actually with uh, your SATA drives. If you're swapping a case out, it's pretty important to do that. Try and put your SATA cables back in exactly the same place as you took them out because otherwise you do have the potential for um, the system to not boot if it's on a different SATA port. It doesn't always work like that. Some systems will see SATA as a group of disks and it won't care too much. But sometimes the way the system sees it, it kind of has like um, device IDs and every port has got its own device ID. So if you try and boot from a SATA section, which is a different physical port, you possibly can get issues. And also as well, if you don't plug it into the same one that you've previously used, potentially you could be plugging it into a port which is actually disabled because maybe you're using uh, some form of PCI Express device like an NVMe uh, or you're using additional slots on the motherboard, whatever the case may be, sometimes on slightly older boards it can disable SATA ports. So if you're still using them, a uh, good rule of thumb is to try and stick them back in to the ones you took it out of, which kind of makes sense. Okay, so let's get the, uh, the I.O. cables in. This is the bit that most people don't like. Now, I personally don't like this bit because the, uh, the HD audio cable seems to be getting shorter and shorter. And that's got to go the furthest, so we want to give that as much slack as humanly possible. And that goes through, there's a hole in the bottom. Nice, actually, nice big opening. You can get your fingers in there so you can pull the cables through. Uh, actually, while we're at it, we'll pull through the power reset switches, all that kind of stuff. Bunch all that together. Uh, the USB 3 on this particular board is actually on the side, so I could have probably taken that in. Actually, no, that'd be fine. I'll take that in through the side as well. Nice feature actually on this board is the uh, the SATA 3 actually has options. So if you don't have a uh, SATA 3 cable or SATA 3 enabled board, or maybe you're using one of the ports already for something, it does have a USB 2 uh, kind of fly lead on it. So you can use that if you wanted to. I don't really like the way that 
ASRock do this with them sticking straight out, it's pretty ugly. And actually, USB 3 ports in general, are we kind of getting to the point where we're all a little bit sick of them? They're just in such an odd place. The connector itself is horrible. And even the newer type ones, even though it's smaller, is still pretty, uh, pretty ghastly in my opinion. Ghastly? What kind of word is that? Have I become royalty or something? Uh, anyway, right, HD audio. <laughs> that is going to go over in this bottom corner, which uh, you lot probably can't see. So let's turn it around a little bit. So there we go. And next one is going to be, that's our USB. And that's a COM port, so that's a USB, that one there. Just making sure you line up the pins correctly, because they are uh, pinned. They're not tightening that screw up enough. No, it didn't. That's better. I thought I looked a bit weird. Didn't want to say anything though, live stream and all that. Now the downside of some of these openings are it does kind of leave you with a few challenges as regards to cable management in this bottom section. It's kind of squishing all the cables up together. Obviously a cable tie or something in there will tidy that up. And also it would have been nice to see the cables um, kind of ending with, well, just black cables really. I'm not going to go all sharpie on them again because uh, it's just a bit pointless really. So that is, no, yeah, that works for me. I think that's pretty decent. Um, although, actually I might like to take that USB 3 back out and put that on that side of it. Just for cable management purposes. Just because I know that's going to be a bit of a pain slightly later on down the line. RJ says, I have my PSU fan pointed upwards. Is there anything wrong with that other than a bit of heat? Um, having your PSU fan pointed upwards isn't really, isn't an issue. Um, as long as you've got air coming into the case. The only thing, I suppose, if you've got a PSU fan facing upwards is potentially because obviously there's only a grill over the top of it, there's always the potential of things dropping inside of it. If you've got any sort of water cooling in your system, then obviously anything leaks, there's always potential for water to drip inside of the power supply. Whereas if you've got it fanned down, because then you've got the metal shroud around the outside of it, any water, hopefully, or if it's minimal, will kind of either pool on the top or run off the sides, which uh, should protect your power supply. And if you've spent a lot of money on your power supply, which uh, I know a lot of you do, then you probably want to take a little bit of care over it. Although saying that, they have started releasing quite a lot of RGB power supplies now, which really are designed to be uh, mounted upwards. So yeah, I guess it really is down to the individual. But it, certainly it shouldn't do it any harm as such. And if anything, it will stop it picking up extra dust. Uh, so what's that, power LED plus. I really don't like doing these uh, I.O. connectors. You really need to work on this. The uh, the in-win case that we did the other day that had the molded block connector was uh, a real, real breath of fresh air, just having one molded plug, which actually a lot of the OEMs still use. So if you buy uh, a case from maybe, I was gonna say like Viglan or Tiny, Dell, those kinds of things, they generally have a molded plug for a lot of reasons, but mostly to speed up the, uh, the kind of the build process because the less time they got to sp spend getting an engineer to build it they can spend that money elsewhere that's interesting to know so yeah seasonic uh from what sky's saying there they want it used in upright mode if it's in zero fan mode which again makes sense because in zero fan mode the heat is just pooling inside of the power supply. It's got nowhere to actually go. So having it face up with the fan shroud open, then the heat's gonna ventilate inside. So that does make a lot of sense. V ventilation um, and PC kind of keeping everything cool is essentially all down to thermal dynamics. If you follow the general rules of thermal dynamics, whereas 
If you've got plenty of airflow, basically anything goes. If you've got minimal or zero airflow, then you're relying mostly on uh, thermodynamics, heat rising basically. So you wanna have as, as little restriction or obstructions as you can. Certainly if you, this was like a fanless setup, then one of the first things you'd probably do is to remove the mat magnetic filter off the top because you don't want any air impeded. You want that hot air to naturally be able to escape out of the top. But yeah, essentially just be, uh, be sensible. If you've got zero airflow, give all of your components at least a fighting chance uh, to be able to survive. Right, let's put the, uh, yeah, we've done all those bottom connectors there, so that we're pretty happy with that. We've got, at the top, we've got our connection for our digital RGB, I believe, somewhere there. Where is that? It's been a while since I've used this board, actually. I've got a sort of digital RGB at the top as well. Maybe it's just at the bottom. Okay, so digital RGB is only at the bottom, so it's probably a good idea to wire in our RGB connector now. So. This has got two connections, one for digital RGB and one for PWM for the fans. So this now is going to kind of tell us where this hub's going to have to be mounted, just just because of how long those cables are. Oh. And in actual fact, I think it's going to probably end up going in the place where it's stuck. There's irony. So we've got a couple of fan headers in this bottom section, which is really nice. It keeps the cables. Uh, Nice and tidy. And I just about see that. No, I can't. <laughs> I am actually lying to myself. And let's get the RGB in there as well. So this is digital RGB, five volt addressable. And it just uses the standard five pin header, which is on most boards, uh, including this one, fortunately. It does have a pass through cable as well. So if you've got a gigabyte board, which has got their uh, slightly unusual setup, then you can still use it with that. And actually, considering what we're dealing with here and the lack of spaces, that bottom bit doesn't look too bad. Could be a lot worse. A few cable ties and a little bit of maybe uh, tape over those color cables. I think it's gonna be absolutely fine. And it is in the desk. Yeah, this, uh, this PC does actually live in in Kath's desk anyway, so realistically, it's, uh, wh whatever we have to do is gonna be absolutely fine. Really, actually, we only ever see the front of the PC anyway. RJ says his girlfriend is building her own PC and he can't be there to help. Oh. Should get her to what she's. She broke her glass side panel while building it, which held things up while she gets that sorted. Wow, that's the that's not good. That is bad. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. That uh, your. Uh, Do you say it's his girlfriend? Yeah. Yeah, sorry to hear your girlfriend smashed her case up building it. That does suck. We're waiting for the day. Really over it. Yeah, it's I'm, I've actually come so close to actually doing that where I've been building a PC Rushing around this the room that we're in literally is like um, For those of you that are old enough to remember when uh, Philip Schofield was in the broom cupboard on children's BBC back in the uh, Late 80s, I guess that would have been Gordon. and Gordon the gopher calf is now my Gordon the gopher and we're stuck in this tiny little cubby hole trying to do all this stuff, surrounded by computer parts. First world problems, eh, my friends? First world problems. Dory says, general rule for those bottom connectors like power reset and such, positive or default one is always facing towards the back. Yes, that is very true. Yeah, for those of you that are um, not very uh, clear on the front panel connectors, they are well, two of them are actually very important because they do actually require voltage from the board. So the one for your power LED and the hard drive LED do require 12, uh, no, it's not 12 volts. I'm not sure what the voltage is, but they do require voltage. So you have to make sure the plus and the minus pins go around the right way. Uh, as a general rule of thumb, the positive is generally always on the left-hand side of the two pins. So if you've got any two pins together, the left-hand side one will always be the positive and the one next to it will be the negative. If you've got a three pin setup, that's when things get a little bit interesting. You do have to read the manual. 
for the switches themselves, reset switch and your power switch, they are simply plunger switches. So when you press the switch, all it does is effectively is make the contact between the two points on the motherboard. And hence why sometimes you'll see people just use a screwdriver over the two pins just to short something out. So those can be wired either way because literally they're just bridging a gap. So that doesn't make a great deal of difference. Although if you're slightly OCD, like some of us tend to be, and you wanna make sure that all the writing is the same way round on your front panel connectors, then again, follow the usual thing. So plus is on the left, minus is on the right, or just so the writing is the right way up. How much is this case? Uh, this case is currently, I believe, in the United Kingdom from overclockers.co.uk. I think we found it at 79.99. Um, in Europe from colink.eu, I believe it's $84 or $85. And from what I can tell at the moment from the US stores, which would be uh, Case King, I believe, it is $99. So I think as far as the interest rates and the uh, conversion factors go, I think it's pretty fair. I don't think anyone's getting necessarily stiff there price-wise, which actually is a nice thing about Colink. Um, for those of you that haven't seen their cases before, they do actually some really, really nice cases. Uh, the first one I came across was the Colink Stronghold, which, uh, which was Kath's again. Uh, originally I bought it, put it up on the top here. It did look very much like the Fractal Define TG, I think it was the C. Um, yeah, very similar, very cheap as well. It was like 40 pounds with tempered glass and all that kind of stuff. And that ended up going from there to CAFs. So CAFs had that one as well. I think actually of, of all the Colink cases we've had, CAFs end up having them so far, apart from that one behind us, which is the Citadel. Which is another Colink. Which is another Colink, yeah. We're surrounded by Colink cases. Can you say Allwood's name? Can I say Allwood's name? Can you say my username, All Wad? Yeah, I guess. Hi, Elwood. Is that like Elwood? Tell not spam. Yeah, and don't spam, or you'll get banned. Or they'll moderate the hell out of you. <laughs> right, so I think we're pretty much getting there. I don't like these connectors up here, but then that isn't really the, uh, the fault of the case. It's more of a, an issue with just the, the motherboard, really. I'm almost even tempted to not to plug in the USB 3, but if I don't, Kath will be upset because she wants to plug in. What do you plug into the top here? You plug in your iPhone for charging, Fitbit. your Fitbit for charging, and also your lightning cable? Or no. Your joystick. Oh, your joystick. Yeah, Kath's joystick. I have two new games this year. Kath has bought herself two games this year, so. No, you've bought me them. Yeah, I've. I've well, technically, Mike's Unboxing has bought them, but. I don't think we did. Actually, no, we didn't, no. I... No, that, oh yeah, that was actual hard-earned money. Well, hard-earned uh, being, well, you can make what you like of that. <laughs> Some people think that doing YouTube stuff isn't hard work. Now, for anyone who's got a YouTube channel, you'll be uh, shouting at the screen right now, because it is actually it, very hard work. You kind of, when you're watching it, you think, oh yeah, that's a piece of cake, I could do that. Just build a PC with a camera rolling, easy. But it ain't that simple. Actually, I'm getting like Kerry Holzman now, I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> Door is going, it's gonna enjoy your tea. Enjoy. Right, there we go, that's a little bit tidier now, I think. I think I can put a graphics card in right now. The saggiest graphics card on the planet. And Kieran Atkinson didn't he only just seen that you were late. Did he? Hi Kieran. Right, let's bend out these. I don't like this. This is something which should change. Bending out of uh, PCI Express brackets. Although they did put in... Yes, I did. In the video, I think I edited it out. I'm not sure if I did or not. But in the video, I went onto a whole rant about the fact of not having replaceable blanking plates. And then I looked inside, and I think I may have edited it anyway. But you get actually three. So if you're planning on putting a... Uh, a 2.7 inch card, uh, sorry, 2.7 slot card or a three slot card or maybe a, a dual slot and maybe a PCI Express card at the bottom for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, then yeah, they got you covered. That was a, a very nice addition, which I didn't entirely expect. So it's always nice to see. So graphics card wise, uh, this is the MSI RX 480 8 gig. This originally when it came out, I think was about 230 pounds from Novatech. And this actually was one of the uh, the very, very early videos on our channel. 
And it was actually a present for George. It was one of his birthday presents for, um, I can't remember what year it was now. But uh, yeah, that was a, a particularly bad video. And we've got a super chat from Allwood. It says, you say it right. And he's given us two CHF. What's CHFs? Thank you. We appreciate that. I don't know what they are, but we appreciate that anyway. No doubt Kaf will look it up because she is our uh, bank manager. What's a CHF, Kaf? No idea. I've got a computer. Oh, yeah. You've got a computer. It's in the palm of your hand. I can't do two things at once. Steve Jobs would be spinning in his grave right now. You've got an entire database and world of computing at your fingertips there. A personal internet communicator, as he said. I need something to jack that up a bit. Where's um, ah, where's Laughing Boy? He's about here somewhere. Oh, Swiss francs. Thank you very much. I just realised that shelf's laying off the wall. The stick. Oh no, he's not big enough. I need a bigger stick. I need something to jack up that card. Hello. As you can see. The car's got a little bit of sag on it. In fact, it's almost uh, its almost got an incline. I wouldn't want to drive up it. That's where it should be. That's where it is. It's not too bad. Could be worse. Richard asks, can we expect three screws in the other week from now on? No. <laughs> I doubt it. This week has been, uh, it's been one of those weird weeks where I've kind of found myself with particular jobs I need to do, which actually just actually worked out to be quite handy to be able to stream. So this uh, case swap for CAF, it's not like a sponsored video or anything, it's literally, I've had this case come in, CAF needs a new case, so I was gonna swap it over anyway. So it just uh, turned out to be quite handy to be able to have the, uh, the camera running. Get it done. John is now said, have you seen the Cougar MX410 Mesh G RGB? It looks a bit like the Kamikaze and it's only 53.99. Uh, no, I haven't. The Again, the Cougar cases are something which have been really, really far off my radar. Um, I will have to take a look at them actually because they are getting more and more popular. The, I went off the Cougar cases purely because the fact that there was a couple of YouTubers kept on promoting them and there were YouTubers that I just didn't really like their content. And it's like, oh God, I'm just being shield left, right and center. And I'm not happy about that. So uh, yeah, that is why I've not really had a great deal of stuff with that particular manufacturer. I should have another look at them really because it's a bit daft just to not, not buy something because there's someone you like doing reviews of it that you don't really like the reviews or whatever the case may be. Ivo says, can I mount an Arctic Freezer 2 240 on the top without hitting the RAM in that case? In this case? Yeah. Um, yeah, I would have thought so. Yeah, I can, if the rest of the people in the stream don't mind, I can quickly offer that uh, offer that rad up and see if it does fit. I can't see any reason why it shouldn't. It looks like it should go pretty easily. Oh, sorry, I've not been keeping up with the, uh, the super chats and chats and I'm going the wrong way. I always scroll the wrong way. All oh, right, it's Oldwood again. So that's where, ah, that's where Switzerland dollars, it's $2. Cool, thank you very much. You can keep doing that all day. <laughs> um, so was it John, no, John, Kieran. Was that Ivo, Ivo Martins, can I make an Arctic Freezer 2, 240 in the top without hitting the RAM on that case? Um, yeah, again, uh, chat, let me know if you don't mind me deviating briefly to, to I've got one of those coolers here so I can quickly offer it up to see if it fits if everyone else is happy I can go ahead and do that let us know in the chat what you think I'll make sure it's actually in the box I think it is You're gonna break uh, your head. I am gonna break my head possibly here one day um, no one said anything yet so I will take your lack of response as being an affirmative So, for those who don't know, the Arctic Freezer 240 is actually one of the larger radiators. It's quite a thick boy, as you can see by the side profile there. So let's see if it will actually fit. I'm pretty sure it will do. This is, uh, there's a lot of space in this case. Right, 
So yeah, this actually. Um, <laughs> Captain Meats. Captain Meets Adventures. So yes, this uh, well, the cooler. This is a, a big fat boy, and it misses the VRM on the back, and RAM wise is well clear of the RAM as well. So um, I don't know if you can get a good, good view of that, but the RAM is there. So there's a good, there's at least ten mils between that, and the VRM cooler is quite close. Because it is a slightly smaller VRM cooler, but yeah, you could mount that in there very very easily and actually you could still yeah still just about get access to the uh the power connector on the top as well so there you go hopefully that answers your question can you change the fans as we're going off thing. can you change the fans on the arctic freezer can you change the fans on the arctic freezer um yeah you can do there's no reason why not you would have to work out your own kind of uh cabling etc but yeah there's no reason why you can't there's only just normal screws going in there, so that would involve you, yeah, you'd basically just have to wire it up straight to your motherboard's headers rather than going through uh, the individual bits. And actually, that's one of the things which I have actually considered doing. For some reason, this is uh, playing up for me at the moment. There is some bizarre issue where the, uh, the PWM doesn't seem to be working as it should do, which is why it's not in a case at the moment. Um, I am actually, I should be speaking to, uh, to Arctic about it and see what the deal is. This was one of their very, very early release samples, so it could be that uh, they did do a V2 of this, version 2. So maybe it is because it's an early version. Uh, Marco Tanzovic, Tanzovic says, uh, hello good people, my friend used chopstick to line up his graphics card. That's a good one. A chopstick. I could cut. Yeah, I could color the chopstick in with a sharpie pen, and nobody would be any the wiser. And Allward. That's a great idea. Did another one. Allward did another one. But I had a sticker, so it didn't. I done a sticker, so uh, another ninety-five cents is that? If it's dollars, kind of. Thank you very much. Aletta says I'd mount the radiator on the front. Uh, the on here there. Well, yeah, actually, you could do. You could stick it on the front there. Although, you'd have to mess around with the fans because of on the back. That's if you're keeping the original ones on the front. I'm not really a, a big fan of front-mounted radiators. I don't know why. It's always struck me as a little bit odd that the one of the hottest places of the setup at the front, pushing air across the system. I know it doesn't really make much difference in the grand scheme of things, also, another thing to take into consideration as well, if you've got a, a front-mounted radiator, is ideally you want the pipes to be at the bottom, so any air rises to the top to stay out of the pump. I see this all the time where people have got um, AIOs at the front and the cables are at the top, and you can almost hear the noise in the YouTube videos when I'm making it. You can hear it gurgling, where it's passing air through the system all the time. Uh, Marco's going to uh 250 RSD, whatever they are. Oh no, I did do that. You did that one. Yeah, this British Noobs, two pounds. Leftover from my motherboard fund. Take my pesos. Bless you, British Noob. He's a lovely man. And I think he's probably bought a motherboard and a graphics card today. Uh, Allwood again. Allwood wants a party. Another five um, CHF dollar things. <laughs> Swiss francs. Uh, Kieran Atkinson says, I think it just looks nicer with the rad on the top anyway. It's uh, yeah, it's it's personal preference ultimately. At the end of the day, people can put in whatever they want to. Um, it's uh, yeah, personal preference. That's what it always comes down to. But that is the one thing I did say in the review. There is an absolute ton of room in the top of this thing. So again, that is the Arctic Freezer Two Forty. Is one of the thickest uh, AIOs that you can buy. So if you're going with a slightly thinner one like the the Game Max. Uh, Iceberg, I think it is. Colink actually do some as well. There's also the uh, XPG Levant, which is pretty decent. What else is there? You might even be able to... No, actually, I was thinking you might get a slightly bigger one in, but I don't think you can. And there's another Super Chat. <laughs> Oldwood says, uh, can I do a VIP of donations? <laughs> you can do what you like with donations. I can't see what I'm doing though, is the only unfortunate side effect of the Super Chats. 
Cav's typing away like a maniac over there. Anyway, let's get this uh, done, because I want to see what it looks like. And I need to finish this. Finish him. Oh my lord, he's done it again. A vid. Lol, sorry. Yeah, just yeah, just, just do a whole video full of super chats. That makes my life easier. Uh, Kaf, can I have some double-sided tape, please? I don't think I've got any in there. No. In the kitchen drawer? Mark's got game. Thanks, Mark. See you later. Can't put the light on. Oddwood <laughs> says, uh, Peter Blay says, oh, this is becoming an expensive party. It, it can become I expensive. Think it's broken now. Like... Uh, the, the, it's broken now. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> I didn't want that one. I wanted the red one. Um, okay. Oh, that, that'll do. Sure? Yeah. Is that double sided? It is. I'll make do. Oh. This is uh, cheap man's tape. I should have got the uh, gas glue gun out. That was cool. I did actually, uh, for those of you who are regular viewers and you saw the uh, the gas powered glue gun, that actually did come into its own the other day when we had to reseal the side panel on the bath. And it's a really, really tricky place to get to. And I don't like putting electrical items in the bathroom if at all possible, unless calf's in the bath, of course. She didn't get that one. I did. Click Tech Kev says Disco Party and another two dollar things from Oldwood. Would you comment the vid if I upload? Uh, yeah, I guess. I think that's uh, very reasonable. I'm easily bought. Ask Kev. Can you put the lights on because I can't see what I'm doing. Thank you. All right, let's try and see if that'll do. This might only be a temporary positioning on this. Again, normally when you buy this, you do get the uh, the proper adhesive on there. So I think we should put that probably right there. Does that work? Mike out? is Shill McShillington. Shill McShillington, that is me. Oh, why does that not fit on there? That isn't going to stay there for very long, I can tell. The sticky pad that was on the back was very, very good. <laughs> I feel bad now that I've taken it off. Anyway, Kieran, let's not get bogged down with that. Are you having much luck with the Radeon card you modded with the Arctic coolers? Uh, the, 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 the Radeon card I modded. Uh, actually, Dave Aikens has no, got it. No, David Aikens has got it. I think that card is actually completely knackered. Um, I don't think there's a polite way of putting it. I think that is generally all I can say on the matter. The card, um, I think Dave was using it and he was getting some crazy temperatures of like 100 degrees or something. But he likes cooking, so that's good. Yeah, Dave does do a lot of cooking, so not really the end of the world, but yeah, not exactly what he was looking for. Still need to wire that one up. Uh, Molex connector. Where are you going? Be Could have definitely done with something over this side cable management wise to actually you guys can't see it could have done with something over this side to hold all that in place but I guess it kind of hangs there so not like overly pretty but it does there's not really a lot you can do when you've got this sort of thing when you've got a lot of cabling going on um, you're slightly at the mercy of where your tie down points are and we've got a tie down point there so I might as well stick a quick tape table tie, a quick cable tie in there, Diesel. and that will hold that in place. Put some tweezers in there. Wow. Whatever happened to that guy from The Verge? Is he still with them? Did he get the sack? I do feel quite sorry for him in some respects. Probably got promoted. But he didn't actually help himself. If he'd have just come out straight away and said, look, I'm sorry, I was told to say it. They screwed me, the bastards. Everything would have been okay, but he didn't. Didn't he go to ESPN? ESPN? Bloody hell. Is that promoted? Oh, yeah, that is a promotion, isn't it? Yeah, that's better. 
I love these little side cutters. Yes, yeah, so there was a video where he is back that didn't watch it. I would, I would actually like to see, uh, oh, Kevin's see what he's up to. No sympathy, he blocked Kev on Twitter. He did, that's right, he did actually block Kev on Twitter. <laughs> After Kev made a, um, a constructive criticism, let's say. I think it was, well, it was kind of constructive, wasn't it? Like hot UK deals blocked me. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna do a um, a boycott of UK Hot Deals because they banned calf. So if any of you use UK Hot Deals, send them an email and say that they got unban unban calf. And if they actually there's, do, I'll be amazed. There's nothing wrong with sharing your videos. Yeah, she shared my videos. Banned. It's not even shadow banned, it was like proper banned. I can't even go in to cancel their daily newsletter. So now she gets bombarded by emails because she can't actually go in to unsubscribe to their newsletter thing. So she gets bombarded with junk from their site, even though she's not actually allowed there. Luckily you've got Outlook, so you can do that. But if you didn't, it would be, uh, it would be awkward. Right, so Molex connector. Oof, not a big fan. I've told him to cool his graphics card with more thermal paste. <laughs> more thermal paste is always good for cooling. Captain Meat asked, are you doing a Halloween special on Saturday? Oh, I didn't think of that. Halloween special. Oh, I'll let Angel do your makeup. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. She'd love that. Right, there we go. Actually, that's not too bad. Considering what we're working with here. This bit, just ignore. You can't see that, that's absolutely fine. Why is there not a tie-down point there? Actually, there is one there. I use the SATA tray as a tie-down point, which is not very, uh, not ideal, but it will get the job done. Which is what PC building is all about, mate. Getting the job done. Cavala said that case in the background got lost by their courier service. Oh, that's bad. Bad. Bad even. There, that's kind of cable managed. I can live with that. That's worse. You can worse. come as Uncle Fester, Captain Rick. I can't come as Uncle Fester. That would be Kev. Uncle Bob said, what would mine be? I'm come as Lisa Sue. Yeah, Kev's going to be Lisa Sue and she just walk her heels up and down the day table. When I turn the lights on and off. Do you know what? That's actually not too bad. As far as uh, this goes, considering how many cables we got, that ain't too bad. Or isn't too bad, rather. My, my grandma is terrible. How are we looking? This might actually even boot. You never know. Uh, Ugly Bob says, ha ha, you tease. K Pierre Play says, my cable management is perfectly in the back, perfectly hidden by the back panel. It's always nice to have it nice and tidy, though. Even if it's in a desk. Even if it is in a desk, hidden. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is, because we've got most of the cables in here, I'm going to then use the cable management that is already in place to uh, help out with additional cable management. So if we take this cable through... Why don't you French plat it? And we can loop this through. Flen flinch plat. Oh, that's going to come off already, isn't it? Above paranormal says ugly case, but as long as it does the job. Ugly case? Ugly case? How oh, dare you? Uh, each their own. Kath, can you get that red sticky tape from the kitchen, please? I cannot, I cannot deal with these substandard components. And I need a drink. Gracias, senorita. And her name's not even Rita. All right, let's pull that off there because that wasn't stuck on very well at all. Reese, Lisa and Sue, and Ugly Bob too. That was quite good for me. All right, this stuff is sticky as hell. Like, I mean sticky, sticky. This probably won't ever come off again. Uh, oh, what have I done with the scissors? Oh, did I leave them in the other room? Oh, 
Can I have a pair of scissors, please? These are really bad. They probably will be... They are really bad. Nothing worse than bad scissors. You'd better off with your teeth, to be honest. Oh, not on this stuff. It'll pull my teeth out. Probably. Right, can you get me some scissors, please? <laughs> they they bloody just, rubbish. Just throw those straight in the bin. They're about as much use as a chocolate teapot. Really. Really, really hard. Oh. Uh, Captain Me's Adventure says a, a tidy back panel is a necessity. Yes. Uh, Ryzen 1700X, Kieran. Yes. Oh, no, these scissors are bloody awful as well, but they might work. You may use your camera. Oh, yeah, there we go. Straight through. Boosh. Now, this stuff is v, v sticky. I've actually managed to stick a shelf on a wall with this stuff. So, this is unlikely to come off again, ever. So, I'm going to make sure I get it in a good position. Yeah. I think I'll be able to pull the. Yeah, I can almost pull the case over with. That's That'll work. This stuff is like a hundred quid a roll. We borrowed it. We borrowed it, yeah. <laughs> when I say borrowed, I mean stole. Um, this needs to go behind there. Above Farrell Norman said, cases are objective. One man's ugly case is another's stunner. This is true. Oh. <laughs> uh -huh. My cable management suddenly looks much better. And we had a super chat from Marco, 250 RSD. Um, I'm not sure what RSD <laughs> is, but thank you anyway. That's extremely kind of you, thank you all. And it says, don't let the tape touch your eyebrows. Oh no, that would look- I'm, I'm much for it too. <laughs> <laughs> There's not enough money that can be donated on Super Chat for me to wax my eyebrows off with that stuff. Cause I think it would actually take the skin, the eyelids, the eyeballs, the whole lot out. <laughs> It is extremely sticky. It'd be good for your character on Halloween, though. <laughs> Halloween character? I'd give everyone bloody nightmares. More so. It's a little over two euros. A little over two euros. Thank you. That's awesome. So, if we keep on getting donations like that, a couple of euros here and there, you never know, before you know it, we'll be looking at a, well, a new processor, maybe. Although saying that, generally most of the stuff that we uh, we get in donation wise, actually it does pretty much always go back into the channel. Normally in the form of uh, camera gear, actually, or accessories for camera gear. So you are directly contributing, even though I can't see this very well. There we go. That's actually not too bad. I have almost excelled myself. Would you wax them off? No. <laughs> no. Because it's very dangerous. Would you let me wax them off? Even less likely. <laughs> so the fan hub on here, you can actually stick in up to 10 uh, addressable devices, which in itself is uh, pretty, uh, pretty extraordinary. So there we go. That's not too bad, is it? So using the existing cable bunch in there, just wrap the cables around and then back up into this area. I'm trying to keep this bit as free as possible. Um, I do need to still have a look on the uh, on the motherboard and see which pin is the 12 volt positive. I'm pretty sure. Let's have a look. Actually, I've got the manual. Oh, I'm not getting the manual. I might have to get the manual. Where is it in that box? Actually, what the hell? I'll just leave it disconnected. I know, because if I leave it disconnected, it's going to do weird colours, isn't it? Can I pull that out? No, apparently not. And... Oh, the trauma. The actual trauma. Let's see, let's do that right there. Don't really want to take any more cables down that section. Right, let's take a guess on it. And if it's wrong, the motherboard will die. Kath, you might get an upgrade today. Alternately, we may start a small fire. 
Either way, it's all good fun. And I'm sure we'll get super chats for it. Okay, that's uh, not great, but it'll do. So, um, I think that is pretty much it, apart from yeah, putting it fire. Fire. All right, let's plug it in and see what happens. So I think we're pretty much done. So let's plug that in there. And if that's worked, um, did I turn the power supply off in the back? No, I didn't. Bang! <laughs> Depending on which world you live in, that could or could not be funny. Kev's uh, encouraging me. It worked. RGB fire. RGB on fire. Not sure what can be seen in there. Uh, where's the remote? So as I said before, we've got this uh, pretty cool little remote control. So you can change all the doodads. Look how bright that back fan is. That's just insane. You can't distract from that graphics card, sadly. No, that's a good point. The saggy graphics card is uh, not great, is it? There we go. Low fan mode. Leave the side panel open and you'll have the ultimate mosquito trap. Have those fans stopped? Don't think so. Bloody hell, they're quiet. Hey. Hello? Leave the side panel open and you have the ultimate mosquito, mosquito trap. <laughs> yeah, it could be, couldn't it? Yeah, I think that looks actually pretty darn good. Obviously, the RGB needs to be set up for the, um, the AMD fan. I think, actually, if I put that back into motherboard mode, yeah, it's just set to flash in white, although because of the old school RGB AMD thing, it doesn't actually do white as such. It does more of a pink. That still looks okay. Hey Google, turn off the studio lights. There we go. GPU looks weird, it doesn't have a water block on it. <laughs> it does no, it doesn't have a water block on it, unfortunately. It does not do those lights just. It doesn't. No, it really doesn't. Caf said that before, and uh, I totally agree that the the camera just doesn't. We need a low light camera or a, a lens which is capable of doing low light better, which we will do at some point. Right, let's put that back panel back on because all the RGB seems to be working as it should do. Need some bottom lighting. It does need a little bit of something, doesn't it? Fortunately, the case isn't going to be, uh, like I said, it's only going to be the, sh the front of it, which is really going to be visible because it's in Calf's desk, which is in a, like a kind of recessed area. But the whole point was because, um, because it is in a recessed case area, it does need to get, um, does need to get some airflow in the front and out through the back and the top. So, well, I suppose that's not really that obvious. Let's take the front panel off a minute. See, this is where I think they've missed out on a trick, because to me that looks amazing. Those those uh, fans are the business. I don't know if I like them flashing or not. Flashing, perhaps not so much, but in auto mode. Kieran's asking. Oh, no, my mother fans control. They are, but they are the nicest fans we've seen, aren't they? They are. They're just. Ridiculously nice. <laughs> and the, the the other PC in the background is now going mad because I'm pressing the buttons. Oh, actually, I know what it was. I know what we had to do. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. Um, if I change the ISO on the camera, you can see what the lights look like. If I can remember how to do that. Are they a copy of the Cooler Master MF120 Halo fans? 
So, ah, there we go. Auto. There we go. You should be able to see them better now. I think they look fantastic. Pun intended. The colours are um, very accurate in real life. The game, the camera doesn't really pick up quite as how uh, spectacular they are. And as I said in the video review, the one good thing as well, because the side panel is uh, clear, the back and any RGB inside the case looks exactly the same as the RGB on the front of the case, which is always one of those things which bugs me when you get slightly tinted windows and it all looks a little bit odd. Definitely needs some bottom lighting to balance it. A few strips in it look great. Yeah, I think a little bit of extra illumination on that bottom bit will be right. But then it does take the uh, the eye away from the sagging graphics card. So, we can't have it all. Hey Google, turn on the studio lights. Is it username? Yeah, but... Oh, shield. Mm. Why not? Just kind of finger on an eye of the shield. Oh, that sucks. Right, I think that is pretty much where we're going to end up leaving things today, I think. Um, if there's any quick questions about this particular case and the setup, then please feel free to do so. We'll do a, a couple of minutes of quick questions if there is anything. But otherwise, I think that. Oh, I see. Change. Uh, can you change the ISO on the camera for me, please? Uh, Pierre plays uh, says uh, uh, 800 maybe. Uh, it's a little bit brighter. I think 800 is where it's normally at. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Let's get that front panel slam back on. Thanks. No thing I don't like about this front panel is they've got that cutout, the grab panel cutout. So. Someone did say actually in the uh, the comments of the original video that that's where all the dirty air is going to come in, but because of how close this mesh is to the fans, the actual the vector in the middle where the, all the air comes in is actually way way closer. So the grab handle, I don't think, is going to have uh, much effect on it, if any. And there we go. Job done. I like it. I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, Captain Meese Adventure says, we need to call you Scotty as you're in the engine room of the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> yeah, more like Picard than Scotty, but here you go. Uh, British Noob says the fans are nice, but a bit of uh, lighting inside where, uh, yeah, could even do top or bottom. Yeah, yeah. You're confusing Matthew. Matthew Day says, not only am I jet lagged, but due to the time change, I don't know what day it is. It, well, thanks for joining us on this Saturday evening. <laughs> yes, I do like uh. it. Pink, pink. Oh, yeah. Kev says, uh, more importantly, does Kath like it? Is one easy way to make Kath like it? Yes. <laughs> a bit purple, though. Is that a purpley pink? Mm. There is purple as well. That's purple. It says it's purple. They're lying to me. Markets employ. That's nice though. I wonder if I can... No. There is another pink in there, I'm sure. Ah, uh, what the hell. I can, I can just about see the uh, reflection in the camera lens. Which may be weird for you lot looking at me looking directly down the lens like that. Anyway, what the hell. Uh, pink it is. There we go. Let's go with a pink. Nice turned yours to turquoise. And mine's now turquoise. Yours matches your logo. <laughs> yeah. Does match the mics unboxing logo, so that's all good. Uh, Casper Hype says, hi, I just subbed. Thank you so much. Uh, talking to subs, all that kind of stuff. Don't forget, if this is your first time here for Mike's Unboxing, please do click on the subscribe button if you like this sort of content. Um, if you don't like it, click on the sub button anyway, because it really helps our stats. Also, don't forget, there will be uh, pretty much daily videos now between... Now, really, and th up to and through Christmas and into the new year. So if you're uh, feeling bored and not getting enough content in your feeds these days and you're fed up seeing the same six YouTubers all doing the same product releases, 
and you fancy something a little bit different, then uh, you know where to come. So that's enough of my uh, my shilling. British Noob says, thanks for the stream. I think my thoughts on the case have changed slightly. I do like it a bit now. <laughs> Fantastic. Cringe Life says, love from South Africa. Cringe Life, love from South Africa. Thanks for joining us from South Africa. What time is it in South Africa? I'd like to know what country, well, what time it is in the countries. My chair has got a wobble. I think I need to tighten up my bolts. That's what you she said. Yes, yeah, so I disappear. Right, we're going to wrap this up because we're on Withdrawal now for the sake of it. So thank you all so much for joining. Oh, there is a question. Yeah. My question above from me. Um, have you ever tried the Easy DIY Moonlight fans? They are gorgeous. I have them in my system. Uh, no, I haven't. But I may well have to get some and see what I like. 7 p.m. in. 7 p.m. Oh, so it's not far off. Cool. 7 p.m. and 6 p.m. in Belgium. Ugly Bob says, thanks for the bonus stream, Mike and Kath. A very welcome distraction while I'm at work. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, sorry, uh, noob, for ignoring you there. Gary Higgs says, sorry, missed it. We'll catch up. No problem. Yeah, so don't forget, hit that like button on the way because it really does help get the channel noticed. And uh, the more it gets noticed, the more we get suppliers send us stuff. So then we can, in turn, uh, show you what it's like and tell you the, uh, the real truth and like this. This is a completely live build. I haven't edited it or modified it or done anything with it. This is as it is. And actually, I find it to be pretty enjoyable. It wasn't, I wouldn't say, entirely plain sailing. There's a few little quirks, but yeah. Essentially, I think if you're buying this case as a, a newbie builder, I don't see any reason why you'd have any issues. The RGB setup is absolutely simple with those six pins. Just plug them in and you're away and going. You don't have to worry about installing software if you don't want to, because you can use the remote control or the reset switch, which I didn't bother wiring up because I prefer to have a reset switch to be honest with you but yeah pretty nice case overall hopefully you've enjoyed it if you have don't forget to smash the like button hit subscribe and all that kind of good stuff and uh well we'll see you in tomorrow morning's video and for those of you who want to see another live stream don't forget we will see you at 9 p.m uk time on saturday evening but for now from me and calf that is it and tara we'll see you in the next one uh hashtag awkward endings Ha, ha, ha.